This tutorial shows you how to collect UK HABs classification polygons, lines and points in the field in a format that can be exported as shapefiles with attribute tables that can be imported into QGIS, ArcGIS or any other mapping software. The app's called GIS Lite and we can adapt it to use uh, Phase 1, UK HABs or any Habitat system if you have the right files with the Habitat codes and descriptions. Most importantly, the app is free. It has some limitations. We know there are some really lovely habitat mapping apps out there that link very nicely with the UK habitats and with QGIS, but they are paid for. The first thing I should do once I open up the app uh, is change the coordinate reference system. And I do that by hitting Carto tools and the coordinate reference system that's in the bottom right. And because I'm in the UK, I'm going to navigate to the British National Grid, uh, EPSG 27700. And we can change the base map. So there's a range of options, including a blank canvas and a satellite image, which is usually what we want to use. And we have a GPS button, which will locate us. And we can zoom to the area we need to map. To start mapping, we hit the Carto Tools, the button at the bottom left, and the Collector button on the bottom right. We need to create a project area first. So at the bottom right, we have project area and we hit the plus button. We can give it a name and tap to define our area. This is used mostly to zoom to the area, so you don't have to be too worried about creating the area exactly but now we have a project it already gives us the area of our project which is also useful now in the project area button the yellow part of the button will give us a project list at the moment we just have one project but if we select that project it will every time zoom to that that area to start mapping uh, we want polygons first of all. So if we hit the polygon button, um, the first thing I'm going to do is hit type and that's going to show me some default buttons. The first thing we need to do is to create some buttons using the UK HABs habitat codes. And if we edit list, uh, we can add buttons as we like and, and we can do that manually but for UK HABs there's a lot of them and that would take a long time. So we do have some files available to uh, my students and we can import those. So first of all we want to do polygons which is GIS Light Habitats Poly and we open that one up and there they are. Just for tidiness I'm going to delete the default buttons there we go and now I can just hit the cross and when I zoom to my project area and then try to add a polygon it will give me a list of habitat types up to about level four of the habitat codes I can code at, at lower levels if I want to just have woodland and forest uh, but in this case I'm going to map some other broadleaf woodland which is W1G um, and I can use the name field to give it a unique name if I want to. I can also use that uh, for notes if, if I need to um, and secondary codes and things if that's the way I want to do it. At this stage I'm going to put a generic name in. Uh, if I wanted to I could also take a photo which won't import into QGIS but it is useful to have for reference when we're classifying habitats. So if I tap to define my area, zoom into where I need to be and select the drawing tool at the bottom left it will go green and allow me to draw a polygon around some well I've actually started drawing it around grassland I said I was going to map woodland didn't I there we go and we can put it over here I'm not going to be too accurate at this stage and I can OK that and I can save it and now I'm going to map that grassland next door and tap to define that one now when I get alongside this other polygon what we would really like it to do is 
snap to the polygon next to it. This version of the app does not do that yet. So what I would have to do is commit the polygon in, and if I wanted to do all my mapping in the field without tidying up in, in QGIS, I can zoom in, hit the tool again, and edit the points to give the appearance of snapping. What it doesn't let you do is create a new point. If you try, it will create a new point at the end point of your shape, which isn't usually very useful. So you want to make sure there are enough points around your polygon to edit the edges if you need to do that outside of QGIS. I prefer to take it into QGIS where the lines will snap together, but it's, a, it's an extra step that you wouldn't have in the paid for apps. And hit the cross, check my details and save. We can also map lines if I wanted to map some hedgerows perhaps, but of course, we're going to have to enter those habitat codes as well. And I have a different file for linear features. We can also add points. This is done in a slightly different way. You zoom into your point, so you might have a mature tree that you want to mark, uh, and you line up the, the cross in the middle of the screen with where you want it, and you hit add to add the point. Again, I'm going to add some custom buttons. They're in a file called GIS Light Points Sec Codes. And there we go, all the secondary codes are in so that I can use them as target notes to annotate my polygons. So now when I mark a point using the plus, I've got all the secondary codes which I can include. Make a veteran tree. I can make a note if I need to. I can save that as a point. When I need to export my project, I can export the areas of interest and it gives you the, the options you would expect to find. Or I can go into the points and export all the points as a single zip file. And again, it gives me various options to export. And I would do the same for the lines and for the polygons. That's going to export Esri shape files that can be used in any mapping software.